Now we move on to our last example. But in this example, we're going to have a matrix that is not diagonalizable. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the problem ddt of xy is the matrix 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3 times xy and an initial condition of 1, 0. And in this case, we need to take uh, the determinant of a minus lambda i to discover the eigenvalues. Okay, so we're going to take the determinant of the matrix 1 minus lambda minus 2, 2 minus 3 minus lambda. So that's going to give me 1 minus lambda times minus 3 minus lambda. Uh, let's see, minus a negative 4. I think I see that that's lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus 1 lambda. So that's plus 2 lambda. And then it looks like the last term is minus 3 plus the 4 that's here. And that gives me a plus 1. So this is lambda plus 1 squared. And we're setting that equal to 0. So lambda equals minus 1 is a repeated eigenvalue. Okay. So let's figure out what the eigenvector that goes with it is. So we're going to solve a plus i times v equals 0. So when we subtract negative 1, we're going to get the matrix 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, with the right-hand side of 0, 0. And of course, the second row is the same as the first. So when I row reduce, it becomes a row of zeros. And at this point, I can see that the only eigenvector is 1, 1. If that's the only eigenvector, then I'm going to need to find a generalized eigenvector. So I'm going to need to solve a plus i times w equals v. When I solve that, I still have the matrix 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2. But now the right-hand side is 1, 1. Notice that the second row is still a multiple of the first. So... Excuse me. I can just subtract the two rows and get a row of zeros on the bottom. And then our convention was, let's go ahead and make the second component zero. And if we do that, the first component has to be one half. And that's our generalized eigenvector. And so now we have a matrix P And that matrix P is the eigenvector 1, 1, and the generalized eigenvector 1 half 0. But we don't have a, a diagonalizable uh, system anymore, so we don't have a diagonal matrix. Instead, what we have is a Jordan form, and that Jordan form is going to ha have the eigenvalue negative 1 on the diagonals, and then it's going to have a 1 in between those two eigenvalues. Uh, eigenvalues. So we'd have that Jordan form, and then we would have to uh, calculate what P inverse is. I'm not going to do that right now. I think that you're all capable of finding the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Uh, that inverse is going to be 0, 1, 2, negative 2. And so what we have is, is that A is equal to P, J, P inverse. And so immediately, we'll have to say, well, what is E to the AT? Well, uh, we can do the same kind of expansion that we did before, and we can see that it's P E to the JT, P inverse. Okay, so that, uh, that is true when uh, A is similar to any matrix, okay? Then if A is similar to a matrix J, then E to the AT is similar to the matrix E to the JT. But now we have to calculate E to the JT. So how are we going to do that? 
Well, I'm going to let j be the sum of two matrices. The first one is negative the identity, and the second one is n. Okay, so notice that j is the sum of the negative identity matrix right there, okay? But also, uh, you can add to it the matrix N, where N is the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. What's special about that matrix N, 0, 1, 0, 0? Well, N squared is... 0, 1, 0, 0 times 0, 1, 0, 0 is equal to, hmm, when I multiply that together, the first one becomes 0, then 0, 0, 0. Aha, n squared is 0. Okay, that's actually called a nilpotent matrix. A matrix... Uh, where eventually, if you take higher powers of it, it becomes zero. That's going to be really helpful in calculating e to the jt. So let's figure out what is e to the jt in this case. Well, e to the jt is going to be the identity matrix, okay, plus jt plus one half j squared t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial j cubed t cubed, etc. This becomes i plus, let's see, negative i plus n times t plus negative i plus n squared, t squared, with the one half in front, plus one over three factorial, negative i plus n cubed, t cubed, etc. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out all the terms with i's in them first. So I'm gonna have i, minus i times t plus one half i squared. But of course, i squared is just i, so I'm gonna leave that alone, okay? Uh, t squared minus one third i t cubed because i times negative, or negative i cubed is going to be just negative i, etc. And so those are really all the terms that come from the i's. Okay, as I continue to expand things out, the next term that's left is going to be n times t, and then minus... n times t squared plus one half n t cubed minus oops minus one third n t to the fourth, etc. So those are all the the terms that come out that have a single n in them. And then finally, as I'm expanding these things out, everything else has an n squared in it. Okay, n squared times higher order terms. So I'm thinking about that I'm expanding all of these uh, using some sort of binomial expansion. Okay, and n squared is going to be zero. So What's left here is uh, the series for e to the minus it 
and n times t times the series for e to the minus i t. Okay, so, so here we have the series for e to the minus i t, and then we have n t times the series for e to the minus i t. Okay, so what is this going to look like? Okay, so this is going to look like e to the minus i t is e to the minus t, 0, 0, e to the minus t. And then we have n times t, so that's 0, t, 0, 0, times the series for e to the minus t. So it's e to the minus t, 0, 0, e to the minus t. Okay, so we have e to the minus t's on the diagonal. When we do that sum, and you'll notice that when you multiply the two matrices together, uh, that there's only one term that comes out. It's t, e to the minus t, right there, and then a 0. Okay, so that gives us e to the j t. Now we need to do our solution. y of t is going to be p e to the j t p inverse times y zero. Okay, so p is one, one half, one, zero. e to the j t is e to the minus t, t e to the minus t, 0, e to the minus t. And finally, p inverse is 0, 1, 2, negative 2, and we're going to multiply that by 1, 0. We'll start by multiplying the first two matrices together. So that gives me e to the minus t in the first term and then in the next term I'm going to get t e to the minus t plus one half e to the minus t the next term is going to be e to the minus t and the last term it's going to be t e to the minus t. That's what happens when you multiply the first two matrices together. Now, if you multiply the matrix and the vector together, then we get 0, 2. And so finally, when we multiply this matrix times this vector, uh, we will get, let's see, so t e to the minus t plus 1 half e to the minus t and we're going to get two t e to the minus t and that is our solution